episode number five, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got another account review tonight. So let's get right into it, guys. Starting with the name Creero. I think I butchered that, but we're gonna go with Creero. Start playing around March this year using mostly ships I like. Dolphin, not a whale. All right, so we got a little bit of a background check for Mr. Creero here. Let's get right into it. So starting with March, six months in, and we're at level 102. That is very, very good progression right there. Very active player as well, too. Uh, six months for about 20,000 attacks. That is very solid. Very, very solid indeed. So uh, we're not going to talk too much into the details. I'm pretty sure this guy plays a good amount, a good amount for sure. Um, I would definitely edit your re uh, greetings, though. Make sure you have that fixated. So whatever you want to write. Put, put whatever you want or even put sub to Mr. Kimo Cheese on YouTube. That would be even better if you can do that. But I'm not going to force anything that you don't want to do. Let's keep that in mind. But I would definitely edit your greetings though. Make yourself look interesting among your fellow Shikikons out there in the game. All right. So next part of the video, what we got here, hopefully it's the list of ships. Right. So we got ships here. So we're going to go down this very slowly. Um, I'll probably put it at a playback speed. We'll do like 0 0.05 just so um, I can talk about most issues that you have right here. So right off the bat, I got to see where you are in the in the, um, the storyline. But you have a good amount of 120s. Uh, 120s and 125, that's for sure. So San Diego, good for uh, 12 and 13. Shinano, always a good choice to have. Swiftsure can definitely get you through 12 and 13 as well. Perseus, always a good ship to have. Ayanami. Now, Ayanami is more of like a waifu ship. And again, you did say that you played uh, mostly ships that you like. And you have Ayanami ring. So I'm going to assume that you're an Ayanami enjoyer. So that's perfectly fine. Monarch 124. Unicorn at 121. So those are excellent choices for 125 already. We have some more down here. We have Vanguard at 125. Javelin at 125. So I think this guy is a starter ship enjoyer. We got to see about Z23 and Laffy as well, too. But definitely a starter ship enjoyer. We got Lutso at 125. An interesting choice at 125, definitely. How at 123. And that's pretty much it for the 120 and above, I believe. We have a couple 120 ships as well, too. Helena, Kagi Kaga, Emden, Prince uh, Ogin is getting there as well, too. War Spice is getting there. Uh, Sadlitz is getting there. And then we have the other DD ships coming in hot as well, too. So as of right now, I don't see any D. I don't see any. Uh, well, maybe Laffy's. Not actually, no, Laffy's probably at the bottom somewhere. But Javelin and Ayanami Rings, definitely a starter enjoyer for sure. I do see Haku Ryu in the works at the right now. Once she's maxed out at developer 30, definitely get her to 125. She's going to be a really, really good investment for your fleet. Um, everything else, though, let's see what we got here. Yudachi, now she's getting a rerun in a couple days, I believe. So definitely, uh, if you're, especially if you're pushing World 14, definitely get her retrofit done for, for UR. She's going to help you out a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, Su Suzuki is also a very good choice to have as well, too, for World 14. Very, very solid and very, very good destroyer. Definitely not a bad choice to have at all. Cheshire, assuming you're not done with World 13 by now, she's a very good choice to have for anti-air, as well as a pretty good tank as well, too, for vanguards. So if you want to level her up, by all means, she's really good for World 13. So keep that in mind. Everything else, though, let's go down the list. Enterprise, also a good ship to have at 120 as well, too. Um, everything else, though, we can probably skip the rest here. I'll probably put back at normal speed. Um, going down the list, let's see here. <clears throat> now, the other SSRs, Jervis is good at World 14 as well, too. If you're lacking DDs, definitely Jervis is a good option. I've seen a lot of people talk about her, so I think I did a review about her as well, too. Definitely a really good World 14 ship, assuming you want to invest into her. Uh, let's see what else we got going down the list going down the list everything else you can skip on these if you want to and is actually a really good ship if you're dealing with like light and medium armor bosses so if you really lack that kind of carrier damage right now definitely good but once you get the shinano haku going for the most part you can slide in whatever you want and it'll probably get the job done so and Dami is a good choice here. Everything else, depending on what you want to do. I think there's some good PvP options in here somewhere, but actually, no, I don't think there is, but <laughs> we'll just ignore those for now. Uh, everything else, though, it's up to you if you want to level them up. Uh, personally, I don't think there's like a lot of mandatory ships 
on this list as of right now that you want to that you should get up that I would recommend. So just ignore those for now. Uh, the list we have here, we can definitely skip on those as well too. If you want to play KMS, definitely level them up. Roma is a good battleship. If you're lacking battleship problems, definitely a good option to have. Um, assuming you're lacking uh, battleships, I would recommend doing that. Otherwise, you don't have to level her up. She's just optional. Everything else though, just like if you want to level them up, go for it. But you don't really have to. Since you're a really relatively new player for six months, you're going to be lacking a lot of ships. So having Romo around is going to help you out a lot. Uh, in terms of gear, let's go ahead and look. I hope you press the tab. Yeah, my man, my man. All right. So we got a 457 so far. Very, very good. Very, very good. Having one of those is going to help you out a lot. We have some Wyverns as well too. One, definitely try to make more if you can. Um, they're really, really good uh, parallel um, torpedo bombers. So if you can definitely get more, go for it. Gonna help you out with a lot of content like World 14, Operation Siren, a very, very good choice of parallel bombers if you have them. Otherwise, you can stick to Douglas's or the new one we got. I forgot when. No, it's the um, PR5 one. Those are um, better than Douglas's if you can get those done too. But having 457, those is really good. Now, I don't know if season you're focusing on as of right now. Um, I gotta check that later on. But do keep that in mind. Anyway, so Steam Catapults, definitely work on more plus 10s. You have a lot of plus 8s right now, which are really good. But definitely now start pushing that plus 10. Because having that extra aviation is going to help you out quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, I would definitely recommend more Parallel Bombers. You have two as of right now. Maybe more. I got to check what you have. But definitely work on those. I know for a lot, for most part, a lot of new players lack purple plates. It just comes down to farming a lot, guys. Farm, 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 farm as much as you can. Um, I don't recommend 7-2 as much anymore because you're better off farming like the upper worlds like 11 or 12. Um, but it is a solid option. If you want to take that route to farm purple plates, uh, worlds 7-2 is always a solid option. Washing machines, we're at 2. Definitely try to get more of those whenever you can. Uh, one fire control radar. If assuming you need that, I would definitely recommend getting that. But you need more battleships as of right now. So that's the main focus. You want to work on battleships and going back to your lists, we have how many battleships do you have invested as of right now? We have Monarch and we have Vanguard. And I guess How as well too. Which are solid options. Solid options. I would definitely give one of them the fire control radar though. Just like mixed thing, uh just to keep like the rotations going to match with Helena properly. I would definitely try to invest into at least one fire control radar. So get this one to plus ten. I think you have a actually no, I think you have um the UR one, right? Yeah, never mind. You're good. You're good. You're good. I, I forgot about the uh, Vanguard um, UR auxilar auxiliary. So my bad. That's my mistake. All right. So we have so Beaver Badge. I wouldn't get this up. Personally, I wouldn't. Pearl Tear is always a good option to have at plus ten. It's a very good health tool. Assuming one of your ships sink, always nice to have. The Eagle Union. This pretty much goes on Helna and never leaves. And since Helna is basically a core member of every single boss fleet. I would definitely get this up, but as of right now, it's not mandatory because I'm pretty sure you want to stock on damage right now. So keep this in mind. Upgrade this whenever you can. It's really nice to have. All right, if you have two Barracudas, per Barracudas are, are still perfectly fine for the game as of right now. So those are fine to have. Now here's the thing about Sea Hornets. Sea Hornets are definitely good fighters. Don't get me wrong, but I think you overinvested into them as of right now. You have four plus tens, and as of right now. If you're pushing into campaign stuff and like Operation Siren, you definitely want to have more parallel bombers compared to Sea Hornets at plus 10. If you're going to upgrade fighters to plus 10, the AP rockets are much better beneficial to have than Sea Hornets. Not saying Sea Hornets are bad, they're still very, very good fighters, but AP rockets are definitely way to go when it comes to plus 10s because they're better for dealing with bosses that are medium armor and light armor. So keep that in mind. Anti-air here. Now, I gotta check how much overall anti-air you have, but when you're pushing world like 13 stuff, you wanna make sure you have those plus 10 anti-air. It's gonna help you out a lot. Uh, I would recommend the twin uh, 113s for the most part. Very standard, gets the job done. You don't have to overthink anti-air too much. These are always nice to have no matter what the situation is because these are just, they're, they're just good. It's like, it's like vanilla ice cream. Like some people like Rocky Rose, strawberry chocolate, Sometimes I just just a simple vanilla cone is more than enough. And to me, a twin 113 anti-air is just a simple vanilla cone. Gets the job done. Gives you what you need. Boom, there you go. 
So that's how I feel about those guns. There's obviously better anti-air nowadays, but since you have a lot of these already, just slap that on. Um, we got some other anti-air as well here. I think these are okay, but whatever. Now these torpedo bombers, converging ones, they're all right. I would definitely try to go for junkers though, because they're much more beneficial compared to the uh, the Sa'uns or Sa'uns or whatever freak they're called in PR4. I'm not a fan of those. I used them from the last, or I used them for the last Meta fight. I wasn't a fan of it at all. I personally just hate it. <laughs> Uh, the shells are here. The black and white shells are perfectly fine. Good, good, good. Uh, I don't know if you have a large cruiser yet, but definitely work on one of these as your large cruiser guns. The prototype e-girl gun, nice to have. We have a good heavy cruiser gun at plus 10 already. Very, very nice. Using our Prince Ogun as well too. All right, solid, solid, solid. These are really good DD guns. So luckily you made a lot of them. So we're really, really, really pumping it out there for the DD stuff. You don't have to worry about bad guests as much. They're nice to have. But those are perfectly fine as well. Purple gear, we're going to like ignore these for a bit. I don't have to see all the purple gear. Um, pretty sure these are just your, your placeholders until you get better gold gear coming out. So there is that. Uh, in terms of prints, I do... Let's see. Let's see what we can want to make here. So reuse is our nice option. But I would definitely go for junkers if you can make junkers. They are much more beneficial. Because they're more... Um, they're more... Um, they're more accurate because they drop closer. Now this right here, I didn't see a single AP rocket in your roster. Definitely craft this and get this to plus 10. It's really, really good for bossing. Light, medium armor, you always want to slot these in. These are really, really good. Probably my favorite fighters in the game as of right now. You can make one. Definitely make one because it's going to help you out for bossing. It's going to help you out for meta fights, uh, arbiters, whatever you need. These are really, really good. Definitely recommend making these. Now when it gets to uh, inventory here. Now you're a six month player. I know you're really far behind on the DR print, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. But just keep in mind, avoid free missions. Just do as much. Uh, just do whenever you see a face, you are mission. Take it whenever possible, because these things are super, super time gated. So grab them whenever you can. Gold plates here, anti air. We don't have to invest too much into them as of right now. Plus ten is more than enough for most of all the content in the game as of right now. So don't worry about it too much. Definitely try to save up more prints though, or plates for going into plus 13s for aircraft and main guns. These are your biggest focus when it comes to gold plates. Uh, general plates are nice too, but honestly, if you're a developing player, aircraft and main gun gold plates are the most priority. So if you haven't uh, get the guild shop running, always buy aircraft or main guns depending on what you need. Ignore the rest for now. You'll come back to it later. Now, prints here. Now, 390 cubes are looking good for Sh Musashi's event. Very, very nice. You're looking really good there. Keeping the alls, very, very good. Whenever you need an emergency, dump these into like a plus 13. You have it right here at 89. Very, very nice. Very, very good. And I'm hoping you're stocking up on your P1, uh, PR1 uh, prints. You don't have to finish them. Um, some of them are like negligible. But if you're a developing player, you're missing a lot of ships. They're very nice to have. You're, mess you're just missing like a lot of things. So. Always, always nice to have those. Uh, let's look at your PR development here. So PR1, we're getting there. I'm assuming you're buying your 10 to 15 uh, prints per day. Make sure you're doing that 10 minimum, 10, 15 if you can afford it. Go for those every single day. You get your PR1 done. And if you're really lacking ships, you have so many to choose from. St. Louis, Ruin, solid options. Monarch, a solid backliner. Neptune, Izumo, and Ibuki, while not the best choices, are still good placeholders for when you get better ships out there uh, from gotchas or whatever. So until then, they're nice to have. And they're very cheap too. If you keep up with your uh, daily purchases, you can finish one PR1 ship in like one month. Yeah, PR2 here, we're working on it. We're working on it. I see Kitakazi's already faced Sim 5. Holy moly. I know you I know what you use your uh, catch-ups on right there. Jesus. So we'll get there eventually. You don't have to worry about this season as much unless you want a specific ship. George is really good pick up here. Osmo is a solid choice as well, too. And FDG is always a solid flagship if you're lacking just like a lot of tanky back uh backliner ships. Uh PR3, what we got here. PR3 in the works of right now. Cheshire already maxed out. A very solid option there going into uh, World 12 and 13. You haven't heard at Developer 30 already? Boom. That's your free ticket to 12 and 13 done right there. Easy, easy, easy. Drake, 
nice to have but nowadays there's just so much better options out there that can do what she does with less investments for sure now pr4 right here this is the season i would highly highly focus on the most assuming you want to work on this season i know pr5 right now is the new hot trend because a lot of people are veterans are not working on that season but if you're a developing player you want to aim for that end game content as soon as possible pr4 is definitely the way to go ignore what everyone's saying about pr5 pr4 is top priority right now every ship in here has some kind of use some more than others but for the most part this whole banner is very very stacked most of the ships here are just super good at end game content you want to work on this season asap you want to work on that and max it out as soon as possible because it is a very very best in slot season by far and pr5 assuming you're okay you're not working on it good very very good now i think which season you're working on is it right now i think you're working on um I have no clue what you're working on right now. <laughs> I'm going to assume you're working on... Oh, you're working on PR1 right now, which is fine, which is fine. But work on those prints for PR4. And I'm hoping you're doing so because you have a decent amount of prints right here. I'm hoping you're aiming for PR4 as of right now because this is the best season. Now, I know you're buying prints and working on PR1 ships right now. And it's fine to delay your PR4 because you want to unlock these ships specifically at developer 30. That's when they start popping off. So... You have ways to go until the, all these ships hit developer 30, probably a couple months away, depending on how you grind and how much you can p keep up with the really good missions. But make sure PR4 is very, very good. Very, very, very good. And PR5 will get there eventually. Don't worry about it as of right now. Uh, going over here, what else do we have? So story mode, we're getting a 13. Again, 13. Cheshire, get her to 120. Boom, there you go. Free clear in world 13. Assuming you have good anti-air, you have Unicorn, you have Perseus, you have Cheshire, it's a free clear. It's pretty much a, fleek, a free clear. And then you have your your battleship, your aircrafts. If you have submarines as well too, it can definitely work on submarines. Uh, looking back, I don't think you have that many submarines. Uh, personally, I think you can clear up to 13 just fine without submarines. Obviously, they help if you're lacking in some areas in, like, in progression. But you don't really need submarines for the most part. You can definitely ignore it. Uh, I don't think you have any submarines as of right now worked on, but I actually have you have 96 right here, which is okay, uh, and you have uh, 58. Honestly, if you have submarines, just slap them on. It's free damage. Once you get your wolf pack uh, going, it's gonna be a big boost for sure. But for the most part, 13, you don't have to invest too heavy into submarines. It's just free damage at that point. But I would definitely, 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 when you get to world 14, invest into those submarines. They're gonna help out a lot. But until then, though, you got Cheshire level four up to 120. Free clear right there. Easy, easy, easy. And then War Archives. I would definitely, I hope you're using your um, your free clears. You, you have some right here. You have some right here. Get this done. Get the D2. I think it's D2 or D1. The D1, I think. And farm those baguette guns. The, the, they're really easy to farm. It's not a difficult map. It's a 2% drop rate on regular sirens and 7% drop rate on the boss. Just use it on Iris uh, Light. Uh, of light and dark and just get as many baguette prints as possible because these are really really good still after all these years get as, get as much as possible everything else though is up to you uh, if you want duke of york you have duke of york but you have vanguard so you really need duke of york everything else though definitely nice to farm like reuse are nice to farm the mags are pretty nice to farm as well too but for i think if you want to aim for just best in slots of right now baguette guns are the best way to go for it so grab this Plus, New Jersey, a New Jersey rerun might be in a couple months or so. You, this is probably one of her best guns to use for her auxiliary slot. Grab it. And then everything else, though, we just, whatever. So we got some questions here. Four questions. Let's go ahead and answer all of them. Um, any suggestion for OS fleets to be Arbiter? I can easily beat Strongholds, uh, but not even a normal Arbiter. So I don't think I asked for this. I, sh I should make it so like you guys show me your OS fleets, but I know everyone's like different progression as of right now. So it depends on what Arbiter you're dealing with. This month's Arbiter is Hermit. So Hermit, the best things to use are carriers because torpedo bombers are super, super effective against heavy armor targets. In this case, you have um, Shinano. Hakuyu eventually will get there, but Shinano is really, really good here. And since your other strong carriers are like Akagi and Kaga, that can work as well too. And then you need some buffer like Helena and then an air air raid assistance um buffer like ardent or 
um, St- uh, Stephen Potter, but I don't think you have her available. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of options available for air raid assistance, and they'll just boost boof, boost up your damage to clear the arbiters. Arbiters, for the most part, comes down to having 125 ships, because the closer you are to their level, the more damage you do, and the less damage you take. So just carriers, carriers, carriers. Even even without battleships being a thing, carriers are the most effective ships to use against all arbiters as of right now. Temperance, Hermit, Strength, her- carriers are just the way to go. So more carriers, the better. Enterprise, Arc Royal, those ships, get them up. Hakuryu, maxed out, really good as well too. Just carrier, carrier, carrier. And then Indomie, really good for Temperance and Strength. There you go. More carriers, the better. That's how you deal with arbiters as of right now. Question two. I don't have any melee weapons. For which ships should I buy them first? So for melee weapons, I would focus primarily on the backliners first because they give stats that are beneficial for main fleet users to do more damage, like firepower or aviation. So those are nice to have. Obviously, the sword procs are nice too from vanguards. But personally, I say the flat stats are much better because... Not only is it more consistent on full auto because you can't really tell the auto battler to, hey, use your sword slash right here. It's just better to have raw stats overall because you get more value out of it because of consistency. So main fleets first, backline and uh, battleships or battleships and carriers for purple ones. Question three. Uh, I have done a lot of war archives. Which one should I do? So I answered that already. Iris in the Light of Dark, the um, uh, John Bart one. Baguette guns, get as much as possible. You're going to need a lot, a lot, a lot. And question four, any tips? Who can I put in a fleet with Joffrey? So Joffrey, I believe, is one of those, like, I think she was, like, French, right? So Joffrey, I think she's a good standalone. Um, I think I did a review on her, like, a while ago. Um, that video, you're going to have to watch. I'm, pre- I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I did a review on her somewhere here. Uh, going, going back on my video list, I would definitely watch the one where I d- talked about her. Uh, maybe I didn't. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I didn't. I, di- I did a video over here, but I didn't, t- I didn't really talk about it. Um, so Joffrey, let's, okay, let me talk about her for a bit. I won't talk about it too much because I don't want to, like, t- like, go into depth and, like, here's a 20-minute video of me talking about Joffrey, right? So I don't want to do it too long, but I'll talk briefly about her. Uh, but for the most part, just toss her in with a, a regular carrier fleet. Uh, most carriers are like, they do pretty much the same thing, just like minor differences, unless it's like a UR. So increase damage uh, 15 per- uh, by 15%. When this ship launches an airstrike, if this ship is above your flagship on the f- battle screen, so top position, launches a special airstrike with fighter planes. If this airstrike is below your flagship, launches special airstrike with torpedo bombers. Hmm. So I say torpedo bombers are better value for just PVE clearing. So you want to put her at the bottom of your battleship. It's free damage. Second skill, increase this aviation by 15%. When the ship attacks an enemy with 25% or left HP, uh, increase this ship's crit rate by 20% and crit damage by 25% against that enemy. When the ship launches an airstrike, if there's an enemy with 25% uh, HP or less, it fires a level one, level 10 special barrage. So basically execution. Or I personally don't think there's too much about her. That's like amazing about her kit. Just put her below the flagship for more uh, carrier da- uh, torpedo bomber wave clear damage. And then just use whatever you want, honestly. I don't think she's like a super, super crazy ship out there. She's an executioner for sure. Uh, but again, there, there's just better options out there, I'd say, compared to what she can do. Now, she doesn't have a bad slot for sure, by, by all means. Three fighters, three torpedo bombers very very solid but again i think you're i think you're lacking a lot of carries right now so she's not a bad choice but most of her kit comes down to using it with a battleship and not many battleships go really well in a full carrier setup except nagato so it's kind of whatever honestly she she has pretty self she has like solid self buffs just toss her in the regular carrier fleet and you're fine Get a Helena, get an Air Raid Assistance, to toss her with Shinano and some other carrier. You're good to go if you want to play that way. So that is it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoy this one. Any comments and stuff, leave them in the uh, comments section or whatever. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.